The church needs to shut up when it comes to politics. But we know the church cannot when it comes to the dignity of humanity. Because that is her call. The church cannot say to, to me to act the way I'm supposed to act. Because after all I have a life and nobody is going to tell me what to do. This is the philosophy out there here people. I hope it's not yours. And because of that, the church cannot grow. Because Jesus himself taught us a lesson. Can God be obedient to anyone? No. But look, that's your God. He was obedient to the cross. He was obedient to God the Father to die. And to die, not to be, a, you know, something to look at, but something to be afraid of. Because he died that you and I can be saved. So if God was obedient to the Father, who I am to be not obedient to the Father? And that's exactly what St. Paul said, that be obedient to the faith. And then St. Paul continued his lesson by saying that although you Jews are the first one to be called by God because you are the chosen people, salvation is universal. Salvation is even for the Gentiles. And that's why he said, and to you people of Rome, who accept Jesus Christ, you are called to holiness. Now some people do not understand this word, especially Catholics, what is the call to holiness? The Vatican Council speak about this very secretly, uh, very, very solemnly, and very emphatically, because each one of us, by baptism, we are called to be saints. Few moments from me, from now, you are going to say, "We believe in the communion of saints." Saints are not things that we put in niches. Saints are living people. And how can I live and live to call the holiness by living your state of life to the best of your ability? You are married. Be a good husband. Be a good wife. Be a good parent. And the parent is not to let the children do what they want. You are not the coach and you are not the friend. You are a parent. And when you are a parent, the word no sometimes can be on your lips. Because if you say yes, you spoil your children and then you are going to reap what you have spoiled. And that is nonsense. Some parents say, I cannot take my children the way they act. That's the way you raise them. Oh, honey, everything is going to be all right. You want that? Yes, that you want it. And you charge it on the car. And then at the end of the month, how are you going to pay them? <laughs> my dear people, to be a parent means to be a God-minded person. And the question you put to your mind is, God has given me this child, and God is going to ask me to make a restitution to him. In other words, I am going to be held accountable for this child. You say, but you know, I raised them good, I brought them to church, but they don't go now. In the long run, if it was not you, was those people that you entrust them to in schools and some of those people were one who were these two who tell your child this this and this and that if a child comes from school from catholic school and tell me that father told me don't go to church on sunday take the child out of school so fast and put it in public school it's better to be there and i teach him catechism myself than to be there and be a bit destroyed my dear people, we cannot play games when it comes to faith. There is only one Jesus Christ. One. And the one Jesus Christ is what St. Paul is speaking. That we are called to holiness. We are called to sanctify our lives. Many people say, oh my God, tomorrow is Monday. I have to go back to work. If that is the call that you have, that work is part of your cross then first of all be ashamed of yourself. 
because your work is the identification of who you are. You are a printer, you make sure that the machine is going to have the same print and the same thing coming out and make sure that the, the ink is there so that when the product comes, you see your product that the machine are going to develop and they're going to do what you are going to work with them. You are a carpenter. That table you are going to make is the masterpiece of whom you are. Reflect you. So work, as Paul the Six put it so well, is the identification of each one of us. Even at work, you said by yourself, you said with my boss, you don't know, Father. Yes, you do. Don't tell me. I live with pastors. Believe in me. Do what I say or I will tell you where to go. No key in my pocket of directory. You better be there at 9 o'clock or you close the door and sleep in your car. But they were pastors of the time and they were going to judge me because maybe they are right. And again, what I say to you is to live your life to the best of your ability. To avoid what is evil, what is not good, eliminate it. Don't play games. Don't say, I am not going to fall, because you can be the Pope and you fall. We are all human, and the tragedy of our humanity lead us to something that we don't want to do, but we do. As St. Paul said, I want to do good, but I find myself doing what's not good. And that's why you need to be strong in your determination. Don't tell me I'm going to be on the internet for 15 minutes and after all my wife is sleeping. No! Because what you are seeing there is adultery against your wife. You are sinning against your wife. If a picture of a woman is more attractive to you than your wife, you are making adultery. Because your consent at marriage was given to your wife, not to that picture. And how many people lost, the, lost their, their lives and go to prison over this nonsense? Because after all, there is somebody who is seeing you. Big, big Sam is watching you, you know. Don't think that you are not going to be seeing what you're doing. Today we are living in a country, in a world, that we don't need a chip in our, in our, in our body. They know exactly where you are, how you are, and what you're doing. And then St. Paul said, to you people of Rome, you are called to be holy. And then he gave him the salutation. May the grace and peace of God be with you. It's not what we want in our life. Oh Father, I just want peace in my life. But that peace will not come. Because that peace is attached to a condition. And that condition is relationship with Jesus Christ. If you don't have that relationship with Jesus, you can pray how much peace you want because you're not going to get it. Glory to God in the highest and peace to people of goodwill. So not everyone is going to have the peace, but people of goodwill. And who are those people? Those who accepted Jesus Christ, obedient to his word, and do what is pleasing to him. And then when we do that, when we claim all our nonsense from our bodies, from our lives, when we let go of all those nonsense that direct us not to Christ but to the world, then Christ will come. Oh, how much we say, oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. Oh, open my heart, come, thou expected Jesus. Hey, you can preach how much you want. He will come with one condition. When you clean the garbage of your life from your heart. This coming Wednesday, you're going to have three people for confession. You don't need to come to me. I know many of you do not want to come to me because I am severe in confession. That's not true, but many people think that way. They'll that, 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 that think that way. So my line will be short. But the only thing is this. Remember this. If you do not clean yourself, that infant Jesus will not come in your heart. And once he is not in your heart, you can pray how much you want. Because you cannot give Jesus whom Jesus is not part of you. And he say, you have to love me with all your heart, with all your mind. I want no compromise. Don't tell me Sunday I am with Jesus, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday I am with Mary, Thursday, Mary, I am with Jane, Zephyr, 
that not work that way. When you are with Jesus, you are Jesus, you are Jesus completely. And then it comes the point when He comes in your life, watch out, baby, because you will be like you are you will be like bombs. You cannot stop talking about him. You cannot stop doing for him. You cannot stop helping other people. Don't think that those things that we do is because we want to be nice at Christmas. No. Because once Jesus comes and takes power over you, he is going to use your hands, your feet, your lips, your, your life. And you are going to touch so many people. And you are going to be an inspiration to so many people. And you are going to save so many souls without telling them to be saved. Because that is what Jesus do to us once he takes possession of us. Would you like to have Jesus in your life? That's what I pray every day. So that that peace and love that he brought to this world will be the peace and love that I share with others. And then we have peace in our families. And then we have peace in our churches. Not fighting like crazy. I am ashamed of myself. Every time I open the paper, there is something. Malika speaking about this. This speaking about this. This talking about the bishop. This talking about Father Carmen. Bishop is calling Carmen because people are complaining. Hello! This is Christianity? This is the church that you want me to belong to? I have news for you. I belong to Jesus. And the church that I belong to is to those Christians who are people of goodwill. My dear people, we need to live our faith by being obedient. And to be obedient to faith is not to think what you think and you talk and you and you imagine what you imagine. This is what Mary did. Imagine this young woman praying, and the angel said to her, you who are so blessed, you are going to have a baby. And he said, I can't because I consecrate myself to God. I gave my virginity to Him. Don't worry. The power of the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And what you are going to be born is the Son of God. The angel came to Joseph. And she said, don't worry, Joseph, what you are seeing in growing within Mary. Because it's the power of the Holy Spirit. Mary and Joseph said fiat, yes. Are you willing to say yes to God? And that yes that you say to him involves a lot of suffering, involves a lot of sacrifice. I speak from my own experience. In my 30 years as a priest, I was called by bishops to go to parishes which I do not want to go. And believe me when I tell you, I left even things at the other rectory because I know I'm going to stay for long here. But God wants you there because God has a purpose. And do you know what? You do more good there than when I tell the bishop I want to go there. Because when I want to go there is my will. When you go there and you don't want, it's God's will. That is the cross, dear people. I want to do it this way, and God comes. Boom! And he tells you in plain language what to go. And that's why today, on this great day, when we celebrate the last Sunday of Advent, say yes to God. Cleanse yourself from things that are not godly. Prepare yourself. So that when that Christmas Eve comes and you go to communion, you can say, Lord, my house is clean. Welcome into my life. Make me an instrument of you. And make me that way, that light, that I will light the world wherever I am, so others come to know you and to love you. God bless you.